When I first got this piece of equipment given to me, I thought, okay, this is a piece of junk. I'm just going to give this thing away because I have no use for it. And I took a second look at it and realized it has a feature on it that I have never seen before in one of these units. Let's uh, check out what I got. Okay, I know what you guys are thinking. This thing's a piece of crap, right? It's a Memorex. My phone is farting at me. I have to check the messages to see what the messages are coming in. Nothing important. Um, okay, so these things are typically crap. People buy these things, old people buy these things. This came from an old person that uh, passed away last week, one of my wife's clients that she's been looking after for the past, I don't guess, eight or nine years, uh, taking her to her appointments and so forth and cleaning and shopping and stuff for her. And uh, she uh, passed away last week, but wanted me to have some of her tech stuff that she didn't want getting thrown out. So um, gave me this unit, and I thought, okay, I'll just, I'm just going to check it over and, and, and then you know, give it away or something, because these things aren't worth anything. But then I started looking at this unit, and uh, this one's kind of unique. I haven't seen one like this before. First of all, other than a couple little scratches on the surface here, this thing is brand new. Like, like the record player has never been used. She's even got the original bill or the original ad that was... Uh, in the uh well this was stuck in there here's the original ad for it so looks like it was three hundred dollars but you see this cd recorder this has a cd burner in it and you can plug it in it has a cassette player not a recorder just a cassette player probably it's a regular car deck in the side it looks like a slot on the side uh, it has a cd drive and um a record changer which from the looks of things has never been used in fact I thought I saw the price that she paid for it this was a different ad because this one I've got here is a, a different color yeah three hundred forty nine dollars four twenty five fifty four is what uh, I guess she paid for this thing and never ever used it well I used the CD player and uh, use the cassette, I think, but the actual turntable portion has never been used because, as you can see, it's still got the original and it's got the, the set screw has never been undone, the back here, right? This has never been released. The turntable itself, the tone arm, still has the twist tie on it that it came from the factory with. So this, is, this has never been used. It's brand new remote control it's never been out of the bag never had batteries in it I got two replacement needles never been used cover is still on the tone arm so this should work in fact this entire unit should work we're gonna check it out see that it does I was gonna turn around and sell this thing but depending on how it works I might just hang on to it because it's got a CD recorder right in the front here. It has manual level control as well. There's the recording level for CD. You'll notice on the buttons on the front here, if we can read it. Track increment, record, auto and manual. It's hard to read, I know, with the lighting. Um, erase and finalize. So you don't even need to use the remote control for that. Uh, eject is there and as you can see it looks like a computer drive that's just inside here I bet it's an IDE drive that's in this unit we're gonna pull the back off it and take a look at it and I'm gonna try it out and make some recordings now I was just doing a bit of reading of the manual you can't record from the radio that's the only limitation you can record from cassette you can record from uh, the record player I don't want to call it a turntable because I don't think it's a magnetic cartridge on this. And this, I think it's just a ceramic cartridge that this one has. Or is it magnetic? Is this a magnetic? I think it's just a ceramic cartridge that this has got. Pretty sure. Pretty sure it's just a ceramic cartridge. 
so I don't think it'll sound as good as a, a magnetic cartridge would, but we'll see. We'll see what it sounds like. But um, it does have an auxiliary input, so we can give it a good high quality uh, source from an MP3 player or another CD player or whatever. I want to give the CD recorder a test and record some music using the auxiliary input. And then I'll take the disc, once I've done that, I'll rip it, and we can take a listen to the sound quality that this thing is capable of and see whether it actually does record a hi-fi high quality recording. With manual level control it actually should sound pretty good. And unlike all of the other audio CD recorders it doesn't require the special CDR music discs. Now these discs were produced for standalone recorders. Everybody had standalone recorders Sony had them, Tascan had them, uh, Philips had them, Pioneer had them. Everybody had standalone CD music recorders and they required these special discs that were only compatible with the audio CD recorders. Yes, you could use these in a computer drive and a computer drive would write to them just fine, but you could not use a computer grade disc in any of these standalone recorders. It had to be a CDR music or a CDRW music disc. And that was something that the record company insisted on because these discs you paid more for. You actually paid an extra tax that went to the recording industry for recording music. Now in Canada we kind of got screwed around on this anyway because in Canada you had to pay a tax on all CD recordable media. I think it was around 40 cents per disc. But these ones was even more. The CDR music, besides the fact that the disc cost more to begin with, the tax that was charged for the private copying collective, what was it called? Private copying uh, collective agreement, I think it was, where you were paying a royalty for the privilege of being able to record music onto a CD. It never affected DVDs. It never affected Blu-ray. Just CDR CDRW, CDR Music, CDRW Music. So I've never bought one of these discs. I was given a, a spindle. I didn't have a recorder that required them and I would not buy a CD audio recorder that required them for that reason. But this one can work with standard computer discs, CDR and CDRW. We're going to test it using a CDRW only because I'm not going to fill the disc up. I'm only going to record a couple tracks and then I can erase it when I'm done. But it will do the same for a CDR disc. It does not require the special audio or music format discs. And the difference between them is on the music format there's a, a preamble code that's written in the, in the table of contents area where it identifies what type of disc it is, whether it's a CDR or a CDRW or a CDR music disc and the standalone recorders they look for that specific code that's in the preamble area and if they don't see it they reject the disc the computer discs don't have that this one here using a computer drive doesn't require it so we're going to test this thing and do a recording on this I'm going to get a good quality I'm not going to use my little cheap mp3 player because I know that it's it's noisy Right, my little cheap one that I usually use for testing tape decks, you always hear a bit of a bit of noise just at the beginning of each track as the music goes to start. So I'm going to use a better MP3 or a CD player and uh, make a copy directly using the analog inputs because I want to really listen to this and see how the quality is. And if it's as good as I think it should be, this might be something to hang on to just for recording music directly to CD because it should automatically, if you put on a record for example, not necessarily using this turntable. If I plug my good uh, Thorns turntable in for example into my vacuum tube preamp and plug that into this, I should be, and it, put a record on, it should be able to record it and record it as good as you're going to ever get in theory because it's got manual level control. So it should sound good, and that's what we want to find out. But before I do that, I'm going to pull the back off this thing so we, got, we can take a look inside it, and then we'll play around with it and uh, 
see what it does. Because I think it works, right? I'm pretty sure this thing fully works. I don't know about the tape deck. I haven't tried that yet. I know the radio works. I haven't tried the, the turntable. We'll try that too. I'll record some vinyl onto here and see how it sounds. And then we'll record some stuff from the aux input. And then we'll take a listen to the recording. So let's turn this thing around and take the back off it. Take a look inside this one to see how well this one's built. This unit is March 2008 was when this one was made. Made in China, obviously. Seems like it's got a fairly solid back on here. Huh. I might be impressed. Usually these things are pretty cheap. But uh, I guess I'll find out when I get into this one, just to see what it looks like inside. Yeah, I've got the screws out of it. Let's just see if this back will pull off. I think I got all the screws. Hmm. Oh, I guess I didn't need to take this off. I'll have to reattach that before I put the back on. But, uh, well, well, I'm the speakers are enclosed in little boxes each. They might even actually have some pretty good sound, you know? Like, it, the, the speakers are ported, and these ports just go into the holes in the back of the speakers, but these speakers are enclosed in separate enclosures. <laughs> I never thought I would see that. Let's take a closer look at the electronics in here and see exactly. And it is, it is a, uh, an IDE. It's an IDE drive that's in here. just looking at what I can see here and uh, belts not shot on the cassette deck I'll lower the camera down so you guys can take a peek in the back of this thing I'll do one better I'll get my second camera out so we can get the camera right inside here and get a closer look at what's in here so this is the chintzy little cassette deck and when I say chintzy little cassette deck it looks like um, I can get the light out of my eyes it looks like the type of cassette deck that you would find on an old school car radio, old, old car cassette player. But the belt here does appear to be uh, intact. Uh, it's not turning to goo, so we'll give that a test. I don't think it's ever been used, to tell you the truth. I think the only thing that was probably used on this was the radio and the CD player. So there's the, there's the CD recorder right down here on the bottom. You can see the interface cable, standard IDE cable that uh, connects everything. Power cable, no way as usual. Hmm. Why is there power onto this uh, board? Is there anything active on here? I see a power line coming up here, as well as the audio line going into the unit. And I'm curious as to why they've got power on this. Hmm, interesting. I don't see any active components on here. Uh, there's a little coil there, but definitely there's a line coming from over here of the power supply. Where the fuse and everything is, there's a line coming over here. And there's power onto this board. What exactly it does is anyone's guess. Or is it ground? It might just be grounding. Looks like both of those are connected together. Are they? Maybe not. No, they are they are bridged together. So whatever that's doing, it's grounding for something. Hmm. Comes from over on this connector over here. But what exactly it's doing, I don't know, because obviously this is just an auxiliary input. So all you need is to have the center pin from each of the, which of these ones here, go to an input. So what exactly that extra wiring is doing is anyone's guess. Anyway, here's the radio board. It's an analog tuner, which is always nice. It's nice to have an analog tuner as opposed to digital. So it's nice that it has an analog radio. That probably will work pretty good. When I 
actually get around to trying it out. Our amplifier board is down here. It probably doesn't have that much power, maybe 10 watts per channel, but it should be good enough for the speakers on this. Uh, this looks to be the interface board over here. One of these, this is going to be the interface board right there. That's got that IDE interface. That'll be the digital board for recording. And then the the drive is below here. We can see what type, see if there's a brand on the drive. Can we read a brand name? It's hard to see on the camera here. My camera keeps throwing an autofocus ma push manual button. Every I, keep, I guess I'm bumping the autofocus ring on here. It's got digital audio out, analog out, which we're not using, obviously. And it's, you know, it's a cable select, master, slave, and CS. Set to master. Something you can't see anymore, right? Master and slave. And there's the host interface. And the power. So it is just a regular CDRW drive, IDE drive, that they've got in this unit here. And that's why it will accept computer grade discs because it doesn't have the firmware that the audio recorders had. Let's take a look and see what's in these speaker boxes. Can we throw some light in here and see the speakers? What do we got in here for speakers? A couple little. It's got a pretty good sized magnet on it. I don't know if you guys can see it because of the light in the way, but there is a speaker in there. Trust me on that one. And it's got a pretty good sized little magnet on the back. It'll just be a little three or four inch woofer. Rear vented. So it shouldn't have too bad sound. I would think. Four ohms. Is it 10 watts? Hard to see. 10 watts. Okay. So probably a 10 watt amplifier or a little bit less. But it should get the job done. I would think. So I'm going to throw the back on it now. And we're going to uh, check this thing out. We'll try it. We'll put it through all its paces. And um, make a recording and see if I've got a winner or a loser hopefully I've got a winner say so not that I would ever use the um, turntable on this thing I'll maybe to play a 78 but um, as a audio standalone audio recorder to go direct to CD might have a winner here let's find out at least it has an external antenna as well like a wire antenna you can always extend that but uh, that's good for the radio some of them just use a clamp that goes around the power cord this one at least has a separate wire that you can string out for a little bit better FM reception. I have to laugh at the cassette deck though because it is probably the simplest cassette deck I've ever seen in my life. It only plays, it has fast forward and eject, it has no rewind capability, just playback. So the cassette deck on this was basically an afterthought. It's stuck on the side where you don't have to look at it, you don't have to touch it. The reason the cassette deck is here is for one reason and one reason only, and that's getting your cassettes onto CD. That's the only reason this thing exists. You put your cassette in, you play your cassette, you hit record, you record it to CD, do the same for the other side, get your cassette recorded onto CD, and then throw the cassette away. That's what this is designed for. It's not designed for anything else, which I actually like because the ones that had a cassette recorder on them, whoop de doo who's going to record onto cassette? When you've got a CD recorder, why would you record to cassette? It doesn't make any sense. So this is actually, I think, actually brilliant. Just put a very basic, hide it on the side because you're going to use it to record your cassettes onto CD and then you're going to throw the cassettes away never to be used again and just play the CDs that you make. And the same goes for the record player. You're going to record your records onto CD and then you're going to listen to them off the CD player. That's what's going to happen with a unit like that, like this. This is the, the market it's targeted to. So I actually think that's pretty good. And it doesn't feel cheap. This feels like metal, actually. I think that is metal. The bezel feels to be metal on this as well. Anyway, let's uh, try it out. We'll do a recording from cassette 
record and auxiliary input. So let's get this thing set up. So I'll load a CDRW disc. Ah, little belt, little belt drive on there. Ah, still good, I think. Close that, and what comes up on the screen here? It says it's busy. Tape. I'm going to record from tape first. So first thing it's going to do is it's going to set itself up. It should identify this as a CDRW, and it does, and it says no table of contents, which is good. So I want to make a recording off this. I can start my tape playing, and I hit record, I believe, and it, it'll be in standby now. And now I can set my recording level. Don't want to go to over, over is bad. So we're gonna set it down to about minus, minus 12 or so is where we're gonna sit. Now this does not have a rewind on it, so I'd have to rewind it in another machine or just turn it over and play it. I'm going to, um, maybe I'll rewind it. Because the, the tape, it just, it only has fast forward, but um, we'll turn this over and we'll, we'll start it from the other side. I'll just put the tape in over here. That's fast forward and we'll just let it run to the end, in effect, rewinding it on the other side. And then we'll start it up and uh, let it record for a bit and then I'll do the same for a record. And then we'll put some inputs into it from the line input and let it record. So let me just rewind this tape and get started. Okay, so I should be able to just put the tape in the side. I can't even see what I'm doing. Let me just flip out my screen on my camera. I'm kind of hand holding this thing now, which is something I never do. Put the tape in and we're gonna pop the tape in and I'm gonna hit the, I'm gonna hit the button on the front here to start the recording and it should start recording when the tape plays there we go and that's it it is now recording I'm gonna let a couple tracks here because I want to see whether it'll automatically it should automatically advance the oh no probably won't because I think I'm pretty sure that this uh, let's turn down the volume here I'm pretty sure that this tape the tracks might be mixed together I'll let a couple tracks play anyway and then we'll do the same for the record and see what goes on there And as I thought, because there was an overlap, this tape is mixed. It did not identify the tracks because there was no silence between them. But it should detect silence between the tracks and automatically advance. Although, one could always do it manually here, right? Track increments. So if I press this button, it would give it track number two. And then of course to take the tape out, just eject the tape from the side. Uh, next we'll try the turntable and I'll, I'll play my cousin's high school band from 1972. So this will be the first time this record player has ever seen use. I've already set the levels. So I've got the machine in the record pause mode. It's ready to go for track number two. We'll just lift up the tone arm. Okay, it even has dampening on here, so I'll just lower down the tone arm and hit the pause button to start the recording. Here we go.
I should point out that it does have an erase button and you're probably wondering how can you erase something from a CD-R? Well, you can't. But you can mark it as a deleted track. So, for example, if you're recording something and your record skipped or something, you could delete that track so that it wouldn't get written to the table of contents and re-record it. However, if you're recording to a CD-RW, then you can delete the last tracks. You can't delete something in the middle. So if you've got 10 tracks recorded, you can't record track number five. It doesn't work that way. But you could delete if you were making a recording from a tape and you miscued or a record and you miscued it, you could erase the last track and free up that space and reuse it. So if you've got seven tracks recorded and in the middle of track eight, the record skips, or it, you record a whole bunch of silence at the end of the tape and you don't stop it, you could go back and erase that last track and then re-record it and free up the space on CDRW because this is a CDRW drive they, they are going to figure that you're going to be playing it back on this drive anyway so there's not a problem with compatibility because this has got a drive that's capable of CDRW of course if you were going to finalize it and give it to somebody else to play they might not be able to play it on their drive or on their CD player unless it supports CDRW because not all of them did but they're going to figure that you're, if you're going to record it on CDRW, you're going to be playing it back on this anyway. So we'll do a line input and then we'll take a listen. Of course, the remote control, which again, it looks like it's never been opened, will do all the same features that you can do from the front. You can select your input, open and close the CD drawer, select your input, phono, auxiliary, radio, tape, or CD, change the display, shuffle, play, repeat, program and clear for programming the playback, finalize, erase, record, Record volume down, record volume up, volume up, volume down, skip track back, skip track forward, play, pause, and stop. So everything you can do from the front, you can do from the remote control. As I say, it looks like it's looks like it's never been opened. If it has, it's been put back in the in the bag. But looking at the tape on the back here, I don't think this has ever been opened. You know, I don't think it has. I think this is the first time it's been opened right now. Well, there should be batteries in it. Uh, I don't think so. Yeah, this has never had any batteries in it. This is this is brand new. The woman that owned this, uh, she had a habit of just buying everything that she saw that interested her, whether she needed it or not. She had a habit of just seeing things on the shopping channel or seeing things advertised and just buying them. So my wife has now the job of going through the house to empty out the house and she's been going to the thrift store dropping off stuff left right and center because there's just so much stuff in this old house before the house uh, gets sold anyway um, that's the turntable part let's hook up a line input and we'll do a recording from a good quality source so we can check the sound quality of the recorder all right I'm going to record a few tracks off of this one let's just uh, start it playing and hit record
sat there unit recorded while I was doing something else called premiering a video and uh, let's just see what's recorded on here so let me hit the uh, CD button looks like there's 10 tracks recorded oh it's still in record mode let's stop it Skip forward. So it stopped after track nine. I guess this other player stopped. It only recorded four seconds of track nine. As you can see, if I started up again, track number nine is only four seconds. Now I can. I can certainly erase that. So if I want to erase track nine, I think I just dial up to track nine and hit erase. And then I hit the uh, erase button again, I think. Or is it the play button? There, hit the play button. And it will erase that. So then I could start up and record another track because I've just erased track number nine. Or I can just finalize the disc where it is. I think I'll just probably just finalize the disc. So I guess I'm going to erase this anyway when I'm done. So if I hit finalize and then I hit uh, the play button, it'll say busy. It is now going to finalize this disc. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to rip the disc and uh, we'll put the ripped disc uh, music in. We'll play it back and I'll, I'll punch it in so you can hear how the recording quality was off this machine. Anyway, that's about it, I think, on this one. To say it was a, a machine that was given to me. And uh, I was initially going to turn around and sell this thing, but depending on how the recording quality is, it might be one just to hang on to, just to use to record CDs, because it would be a lot faster if the, if the quality is what I hope it is, which I, I don't know at this point, but if the quality is what I hope it is, it may be a solution to not having to fire up the computer and record music from a record or a cassette using Audacity and then burn a CD. Because that just takes longer, right, to record it to the computer just to transfer it to a disc. That takes longer. If someone wants something recorded just to a CD, it might make sense just to hang on to this thing, put it on a shelf, and when it's needed, haul it out throw a blank CD in and let it record. That's the way I see it anyway. If you can do it all in one and, and the quality is good, then just do it with one unit. Because what I could get for this to sell it is probably not a heck of a lot of money. Anyway, there's the CDRW is now, oh look, it's a Memorex CDRW recorded in a Memorex recorder. <laughs> anyway, um, that's uh, about it. We're going to take a listen to the uh, the recording here, and uh, thanks for watching. <laughs>